Okay, everyone. So this video presentation is an overview of 126, which is Understanding Analog Design, the Random Number Generator. So as I mentioned, we are going to specifically be looking at the random number generator. And in this presentation, it's block diagram. Um, we're going to look at the circuit design of just the analog section um, of a random number generator. Now, as you could probably guess, a random number generator is a circuit that creates a random number. There are some components in here that we are going to look at later. Um, but in general, this is the overall block view of our circuit. So it starts with a push button um, and that push button then goes into the analog section. So the analog section of this actually produces a dampened square wave that rolls the count and slowly stops. So basically what happens is, is it starts with a really dense square wave and that square wave then gets slower and slower and slower. So it's kind of like when you skip a stone and it's rippling out. Um, so eventually it comes to a stop. And that stop then goes into a sequential logic section, um, which is which that on every pulse of the clock, the sequential logic section increments a binary count from one to six and then repeats. So every time we're getting one of these clock signals, it flips through one to six. Eventually, we don't have any of these because it spaces out so far. And that results in us just getting the one to six for it to then repeat. So obviously we have different outputs, which then can go into our combinational logic section. The combinational logic section then encodes the binary into a seven segment display. Now we haven't looked at seven segment displays yet, but basically they are just LED panels that have different diodes controlled by different parts of this logic right here, which we're going to look at later. Um, but basically it's going to take that binary and convert it into a uh, numerical number of a certain value, depending on what was encoded from over here. So looking at this, um, this is our actual schematic diagram for just the analog section. We are really only talking about the analog section um, for this week. So if we take a look at this, here is our push button and we would press that to roll. It is then going to close the circuit. And as you can see, we have a 555 timer here that is going to control the circuit. Remember that a 555 timer is controlled by a series of resistors and capacitors. That is then going to output that clock signal to the next section of the random number generator. So let's take a look at a simplified version of this. So when the push button switch is pressed, we have a 100 microfarad capacitor. So that's C1, okay, over here, that quickly charges to 5 volt, 5 volts through the 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. So essentially this push button closes, we have voltage come through here and it zips right down here to C1. As long as the push button switch is pressed, the top end of the 10K resistor um, is held at five volts. So this results in a simplified version that is equivalent to a standard 555 timer oscillation. So again, push button goes here, this charges, when it's released, that starts to go down. As long as this stays pressed, um, we have that 10K being charged. So let's take a closer look at that simplified version. So this is something similar to what we've seen before. Um, what we're looking at is we are looking at our 555 timer. So you can see that RA is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. RB is an 18 kilo ohm resistor. And then C is 470 microfarads. That is a typo. That should not be nanofarads. That should be a microfarad. Um, same with down here. Um, so basically what we can do is then we can calculate the period. The period for this ends up being 14.982 uh, milliseconds. And then our frequency comes out to 66.74 hertz. So let's take a closer look at the simulation of this. So here is what we would see on these on an oscilloscope if we were to build the circuit and run it. Remember in desktop version of Multisim Live, we have these full version oscilloscopes. You guys don't have that. We're using the grapher, um, but this is what it would look like. Very similar to what you guys get in the grapher anyway. So if we look at just VCC out or V out, okay, it's going to channel A. So this is what we're getting from that V out. We're getting that square wave coming out of that portion of the circuit. The other channel that we're getting 
of course, is the VC right here. And this is creating that fluctuation right there. So if we look at the timing of the simplified version, again, we have a period of 15 milliseconds and that frequency is 66.66 Hertz. And so right here is where we get that period from on this oscilloscope. So we're going to take a look back at the actual version. So when the push button switch is pressed and held, the actual analog section of the board game counter performs like a standard 555 time oscillator. However, for the board game counter to operate correctly, the oscillation must slow and eventually stop. So that's where that 100 microfarad capacitor and the 1.2 kilo ohm resistor play a key role. So we have the simplified version, but this would keep going and going and going and it wouldn't stop. That's why we have to add this 1.2 kilo ohm resistor and this C and C1 into the circuit because that's what's going to allow that oscillation to eventually stop so the rest of the circuit can control what it needs to control. So let's take a look at the simulation of the actual version. You'll notice that we have a third channel added onto our oscilloscope because we're now using channel 3 as well. So if you look, V out stays a square wave, but it eventually gets longer. So the push button in this area is when it's pressed. And then once it's released, the square wave starts spreading out. Okay. And then VC, again, it's that tighter wave. And then it starts spreading out. And then the V limit, of course, which is based on C1, is right here. And you can see it just gradually starts to wane and decrease until it's actually a completely flat line. So when the push button is pressed, the 555 timer produces about 66 hertz square wave. And then once the button is released, the frequency gradually decreases and the period increases. Again, eventually the oscillation of this stops and that's when the rest of the circuit can determine a specific number. So now we need to look at a couple of different times. If we look at the previous slide, you'll see that they broke this down into three segments. We have time A, time B, and time C. So let's take a look at time A first. So if we zoomed in inside of our grapher or our oscilloscope, just to look at time A, so you can see that's between our two cursors right here, um, we've got a period of 15.536 milliseconds, and our frequency is 64.36 hertz. If we look at period B, our, or our, if we look at time B, our period is 27.50 milliseconds and our frequency is 36.36 hertz. You can see what changed here. The relationship is that the period obviously got longer and our frequency obviously got lower. Then looking at time C, we can see that same relationship again because the period is 51.429 milliseconds and then our frequency is 19.44 hertz. So again, we're seeing a decrease in frequency as the period increases. So just to recap, we are only focusing on the analog section of the circuit. You guys are going to be building that today and doing a little bit of analysis with it. And then we are going to eventually be moving into the sequential logic and the combinational logic sections of this circuit as well.